Hello everyone, I'm Tim and I'm going to tell you about how we use Neo4j in our production uh, environment. If the clicker will click, uh, maybe they can click. Yeah, <laughs> so this is me, I'm uh, 20 years old from the Netherlands and I'm the CTO of Media Connect, our company a startup in Utrecht um, following uh, that. We are founded in 2014, about 17 people working with us, and we are uh, mainly a niche player in the uh, media, and publishing, and events sector. So I'm going to tell you what we are doing with, uh, with Neo4j in our environment. So at first, yeah, it's about engagement. We make a sort of engagement platform where we, uh, where we record everything that a person does and interacts with our uh, clients and that can be uh, anything something like this, this is, oh. next slide yeah so this is where we started we started with a, a, a SQL database uh, MySQL uh, simple one storage for every customer at uh, we have then we moved to a sort of uh, tabular uh, design in uh, a graph in uh, MySQL but that w beca became solely slow and after a time, that wasn't really working for us anymore. So we moved about three and a half years to Neo4j, uh, first piloting with about a half a year uh, next to our uh, existing database, and then at the end we moved to the uh, we moved Neo to production. Let's see if it clicks. Yeah, this is our graph uh, upon yesterday. <laughs> We have 48 million nodes in the database uh, stored there, about 353 million properties on the nodes, and about 164 million relationships connecting them. And we are uh, removing and adding a half a million nodes a day. All those kinds can be data that's just temporarily stored there, and all uh, the rest is there, there to stay. We're doing that for a lot of clients, as I said, mostly in the sector of media. So this is our, like, almost all the media companies in the Netherlands, um, and also IDT they do with all, like uh, big events. So I'll get you through some of the uh, case studies we have with them, We're using on Neo. So this is IDT. it's a big event company, maybe you know it, they have a small sort of events, I can see if you know a few. Uh, they're mostly in electronic music, like Mysteryland, Sensation, Thunderdome, doing that all over the world, Thunder Tomorrowland, or even Defcon, if you like, hard style for assistance. Some, these are the parties they throw, uh, big festivals with 60 to 200,000 people attending. What we wanted to do at first is gathering business intelligence on what are the people that are coming there uh, doing, uh, who are the people that are attending, and uh, what, how can we sell them, of course, at the end, more tickets. Um, we started with doing a, a data collection. Uh, so I will show you, how, show you how the process is and how that works. So we started with that at first. Then the second focus point was uh, getting those tickets into personalization so that you can resell them and transfer them to anyone else. And at the end, we wanted to dynamic queue the waiting lists before the event ticketing sales. So here you get, oh, there it goes again. Yeah, so this is business intelligence. We were just saying, uh, okay, give us all the events uh, for the next 90 days and uh, compare them to the last few years and see how, that's, how we are performing in the ticket sales now up until that. We're doing that in real time. We did this before in an SQL database and then it, it, would, it would be calculated every night, but now we can do it in real time because it changed all the way down. So I said we needed to collect data for that, so we started doing uh, ticket sales. We get the ticket sales in, pay logic data is coming in so that we actually know who is buying tickets. We started on all the festivals with pre-registration so that people had to register before they could buy a ticket. And uh, we have using our apps or other sites to use and to tell people to get like personal timetables, log in with a Spotify account or, or Facebook account to get gather, gather data there as well. So this is a, like a pre-registration page, people can use that to, uh, to log in before they can buy a ticket. And as you can see, oh, on the last slide, I think it's just slow. 
you can log in with Facebook or Spotify or Google, and we use that data to check what are the type of people that are using this uh, to go into this festival. So, and we also look at the websites. So how are people interacting with it? Which content are they looking at? And that are the sort of things. So then we build up a simple profile. This is one slice of our uh, database. This is really the beginning of it. So we have a user here called Sam. He has a bank account. He has logged in from a, a device or a screen. He has bought a ticket. In this case, he registered for the DEF CON this year. And he's using an email address and a phone number to do that. So that's nothing complicated there. Um, then on the next slide, you can see that he bought a, a visual ticket. He bought one ticket for VIP access on Sunday, and he bought two on the next, on the Saturday from the event. So if you go to the next slide, you can see that something is happening here. Um, for this, this is another user called Thomas, and but he is using the same email address as our other user, Tom. And they are both buying a lot of tickets. So this are probably someone that wants to sell them. So if you could see it in the next slide, this is the what happens if you wait like two hours after the ticket sales. You can see that a lot of people are re, uh, transferring their tickets so to try to make profit on them because if the tickets are sold out, put in 40% and then sell them. So we wanted to filter out those people and use that data. So now we know who is selling and reselling tickets. And we use that for a few years in, in advance so we know that people are using that. This is the data model uh, graph from one of our users. So you can see that they are doing a lot of things. So we add ticket sales, we add Facebook views, we add uh, interaction data, like how many uh, friends they have on Facebook, so how big is their influence. All that sort of things are gathered back in our database in real time. And we use that to do the next thing in the, in the score is dynamic queuing. So if you have like, uh, you want to buy, you go to a festival with 200,000 tickets in it, but we have like 500,000 people wanted to buy it. We are going to dynamic queue them in, uh, so that we have the people that we want to be at the festival uh, being able to buy the tickets at first. So that can be people that are like going every year so that we have our real fans. We can have people on top that, has, that have, um, are like top influencers, so have more social interactions. Or that how many beers they drink in last year's edition so that they make more revenue for us. All those sort of things are, co are, are connected back into the database, and in real time, we can do recommendations. So if you have 200,000 people in line, we can do a sort of background recommendation on who is the best buyer to buy the product. So the, the customer doesn't say anything itself. I think it just goes automatically. Another case we're using is Amsterdam. It's a marketing uh, organization in Amsterdam trying to uh, provide the best events for, uh, for all people. Uh, people that are visiting Amsterdam, and they don't want to find someone, uh, just the, the regular events, the biggest events. So they have a website. This is Amsterdam.com, uh, with about a million visitors each month. Uh, so we have a lot of data there from all those events that they are having on that site. We have an, an event calendar with all those events in there, and we use the clickstream data here for a recommendation tool we created. So this is Gochem. It's a chatbot in Facebook Messenger. Uh, it just asks the user a mood, so why are you in for? And from that on, we use recommendations in real time to do that on the, all the events that are currently using in Amsterdam. So that can be in the next week or the next day. Depends on the user logging in. And it's a just chat. The challenges we faced when using Neo. Yeah. We had tons of requirements. It had to be much faster than our other store. It has to be high availability because 200,000 people will go at that uh, queue at once. So it has to be there at that moment. You can't go down in that park. So it has really peak moments where we are using the down. We wanted to do it in real time and not being having to recalculate everything like we had to do in our, uh, in our MySQL store. And uh, we are re about a normal day, we are doing a 34 million requests a day on the data store. So this is our, mo our highest peak at so this moment. So about 55,000 people trying to pre-registrate for an event in a minute. So they're all, uh, we can't queue them. They're, you just uh, have to insert them in the database and uh, that works fine uh, with our store at this point. 
We could do that with about 5,000 with our MySQL uh, store and with five times the same hardware. Uh, as I said, it, was, it is business critical, so it has to be there 24 seven. Then something about the architecture. Yeah, it's uh, basically a REST API based on pay, pay or node with a microservices platform beyond that and stored everything in Neo 4 j database. So our login information, user linking, everything that we do is in a Neo 4 j database. We don't have any other data store anymore. Uh, yeah. And we're doing that all in a two cluster or three, but if you consider it, uh, cluster uh, Neo 4 j database with just five CPU and 55 gigabytes of uh, ROM. And that's like, I think, but I said that we had six times that amount using our MySQL with almost half of the uh, peak moments. Yeah, as I said, this is our star today. Some of the things we uh, encountered on uh, why we choose Neo4j. It's just coming. We wanted native graph technology because we already had that graph model into our database, but it was like too, getting too slow. Neo is, of course, proven technology, as you all know. <laughs> so many people are using it. So that was a chance why we wanted to choose from that. It's extremely fast. Our average responses is about 128 milliseconds. One of the biggest problems we, uh, we encountered was that we couldn't find any uh, hosting uh, solution that had experience with Neo on this scale. So that was one of the things we really should, we, where we have like, a, I think we about a, bit, about a year together with our hosting partner to, to get it right. And of course, uh, uh, developers. Uh, almost nobody knows Cypher, so we all are training them ourselves. Um, but that's, uh, that's the thing we really like. So it's still, Cypher is the best thing uh, that happened to us. That's it. Any questions? The final slide that <coughs> you just had, your disadvantage, you said customer fear. Yeah. Um, can you just go into that for a moment? Um, do you need your customers, and are they aware of Neo? And uh, yes, they are, of course. We are telling them. And it's also a, an advantage for them because they can uh, do this sort of recommendations in real time, and they can do that on a MySQL database, but it also uh, raised all those sort of questions people won't ask you when you're saying, oh, we are using SQL. So things like, how steady is it? What's the performance? Is it operational 24-7? Um, they just are, uh, yeah, fear to, to go down on the moment that's, because we are doing things that are like at that point, it has to be in that five minutes because that's the moment where we are selling 200,000 tickets. So. It is part of this that your customer Yeah. Yes. Is there anything special you're doing for the insert speed? For the speed? For the insert speed. Are oh. you doing any sort of procedures or any queuing? Or no, no. We are doing it in real time without any queuing and just using uh, uh, normal Cypher queries. Uh, we tried storage procedure, but because it's harder to profile, we, uh, we stopped using that and started using uh, back uh, uh, Cypher queries. Um, but still, yeah, we're getting 51,000 inserts in a minute uh, with like 50,000 registrations a minute. So that are like four, four or five nodes with, I think, maybe 20 relationships uh, without any problems on a really small cluster. So for now, we are sticking to, uh, to Cypher queries. So you were showing your architecture diagram. Is your website making raw writes? You're saying you have 51,000 writes. Yeah. Uh, through an API, but yeah, there is no nothing in between. Huh? No, we don't have any. Yeah, no, we we before we had it, we had like uh, uh, queuing before it, but it's we, we just don't need it anymore after we switched to Neo. It's that fast that we just can insert fifty thousand people uh, in a minute with just two servers. Did you have any help um, scaling your system or designing the servers so that? It um, a bit, we have uh, help from Neo support. 
And we started with a much smaller cluster, of course, because our data set was at when we started, like, I think about four to five gigabytes, and now it's about 80 gigs. So uh, we had some performance issues or in the scaling about it. Um, but it's, it, was, it came down to just tuning the machines much better. Um, and if you look on the, on the community sites or just uh, on the documentation, it's very well. So you should be fine with that. Any more questions? Thank you, Ralph.